Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for Saturday with Stacy, YouTube number 292. And today my table is pushed all the way up against the wall and my camera is all the way up against the wall. So I'm hoping that there's no <laughs> no tip tipping of the camera today. <laughs> all right. What we have for you today is some brand new product and then some new help with a product that you might already own. I have Stampendus for you today and we have exclusive product from them, several new stamp sets that are exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple. I've got a new mirror plate from them, which is wonderful. And then we're gonna be working with the Window Rama die today, which is a great die. And I've done it before, but I did it very easy. That way you could just get started with the window Rama die. Today I'm going to go a little bit more advanced for you. This really, really, really is a technique class and there's some really, really, really important things that you need to take notes on so that you, you don't make the mistake that I made. Sometimes it's almost more important that I tell you what not to do versus what to do. So if you need to grab a piece of paper and pencil, now would be a good time. I will not blink, <laughs> so you can pause me. That way I don't look funny. <laughs> okay, hopefully you're back now. <sighs> and I, I have stuff to color with, but I don't even know that I'm going to bother trying to color some of the things that I stamp and do. Because again, this really is about a technique. And with the window Rama die, it's all about how to use that die to its fullest ability without making you go, oh my gosh, I cannot figure this out. So I, I think you're gonna like what we have for you today. The new mirror stamp plate from Stampin' This is wonderful. But again, there's a few things that you don't wanna do with that mirror stamp plate that I did. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through that too. I have got winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. I did receive the email from our insurance company. Actually, after I received an email, I also made a phone call and talked to the director of claims who we are on a first name basis now, um, and they are not going to extend my housing. They, well, they, they gave, they've given me through June. So we thought it might be April, but it's actually June that um, they're, and after that, they're not going to extend our housing for our rental home while we try to work through the challenges of the claims process <laughs> for our home that burned down in July, two years ago. Yes, it's taken that long and we are still not settled. So being that they, they, are, they are thinking, they are, it, it is their position that I have stalled the process. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, I don't agree with that, but it is their position that I have stalled the process in settling the claim, which I suppose could be true because I won't settle for what we are not rightly owed. <laughs> so maybe that could be, it could be construed that way because why would anybody settle for less than what they're actually owed and what they've paid their premiums for? So I have contacted the California State Insurance Commissioner and have sent them all the documents to help support our claim. And they have reached back out to me and actually sent a very lovely handwritten note, which I thought was amazing. The investigator who's looking after us took the time to not only email, but send a handwritten note to me. And uh, so we're just gonna work through it with them and see if they can help us. And I'm hoping that our insurance company, should they be watching this, don't know if they do or not, do the right thing. Just do the right thing. That's all I'm asking. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't want anything more than, than what we are owed. But I will not take anything less than what we are owed either. 
we made those premiums to you in good faith and it was a contract and now it's your turn to uphold that contract so if you happen to be watching insurance company please do the right thing it'll help you sleep better at night and it'll help me sleep better at night so if they're not watching well i tried <laughs> All right, so today we have got for you Stampendous. It is fabulous. I have got winner, winner, chicken dinner, and I'm going to announce that right now. We are doing our live chat. If you're watching this first thing Saturday morning, hi, we're live chatting. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and if it's not Saturday morning anymore, sorry, you missed the live chat. But we've got winner, winner, chicken dinner. I'll show you the make and take that's gonna be going on right after our live chat ends this morning and uh wahoo kachoo <laughs> okay all right winner winner chicken dinner and this was from uh youtube number 291 which was the sizzix oh my gosh the 3d impresslets from tim holtz those were beautiful and the 3d embossing folders and that foil self-adhesive foil paper that we had at a rock star price okay so Winner winner is Kathleen, Kathleen Grogan. Kathleen, is this you? Is that you, Kathleen? Because if it is, you're a winner. Chicken dinner. You're a winner. Chicken dinner. Wahoo. Got you for you. <laughs> All right, you have a friend, Kathleen. You're not alone. You have a friend who has also become a SMS winner, winner, chicken dinner. Are you ready? It is Renee, Renee Allen. Hello, Renee Allen. Guess what? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> you know who else would be a winner, winner, chicken dinner? I would if we could get our insurance company to work with us and, and at the very least not make me homeless, I'd be a winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Kathleen and Renee, lovely ladies, how are you gonna claim your prize? Easy peasy. You're gonna go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com, you're gonna look for the link that says winner, winner, chicken dinner, you're going to click it and you are going to uh, follow the directions will confirm that you are indeed our winner and then get your prizes off to you. Also, please remember at this point, I am making a conscious effort and, an, and a decision to not name our insurance company. I am not naming it because when you throw that pebble into the water, it ripples out. And there are only about six people at that insurance company that has the fate of me and my family in their hands. They hold they hold the fate of what happens to me. It's so hard for me. I'm such a control freak to have somebody else hold the fate of what happens to me. So we are we are I am making a conscious effort to not name the insurance company because you too may have this insurance company and you may be dealing with other adjusters, other people who are helping you in the way that you are supposed to be helped. And if I name that insurance company, I know that there will be several of you who will want to go out and write them letters or call them trying to help me and protect me and, and, and be an advocate for me. But that poor receptionist who has to answer those phone calls or whomever has to answer those emails, they haven't done anything to harm me nothing so so I don't want to cause them harm will there come a time that I may have to do something publicly I hope not I really don't but at this point two wrongs don't make a right and I do think at this time it would be wrong for me to share their name with you and I know several of you are gonna say but Stacy we don't want that company if this is how they've treated you and again this is how they've treated me. It may not necessarily be how they've treated you or how they will treat you. So I'm going to implore them one more time. Hi, policyholder. <laughs> 
like to not be homeless after June 30th would really make my heart happy. Woohoo could shoo. All right, so two wrongs don't make a right. We're gonna we're gonna keep quiet about who the insurance company is and see if the California State Department of Insurance can help us out and see what they recommend. And if they recommend that perhaps we have to go public, then maybe that is something that I would then consider. But I would really need to have somebody in a much higher authority say, yes, Stacy, maybe it's time you do that. Because I do feel a moral obligation to not cause harm. Social media is supposed to be used for good. That's what we're supposed to be doing out here, good. And I don't want to cause harm. At the same time, they're harming me, so just stop. <laughs> Don't cause harm. Okay, we're gonna get started for today. I am excited to show you what I have to show you and I'm gonna tilt on down. We're gonna show the make and take and then again, I probably am not gonna be doing much coloring or anything like that. This is a true technique and you are going to want to perhaps take notes. There's my pose face. <laughs> All right, down we go. Bye. I have no idea if they watch my YouTubes or not. My guess is probably not. <laughs> of course, then they would see what they're working with. Uh, an average mom and pop person who really needs to go home. Oh, maybe that's a little too close. Let's back it up just a little bit. All right. So this is the make and take that's going on downstairs right now. Super cute, right? And you, our customers could either make this one or they could have made this one or they could have made this one. Now, I'm gonna start very, very simple in this YouTube and we're gonna get progressively harder and we're gonna start with a new product from Stampendous and it's called their mirror stamp plate. Let me pull it up over here. So it's called their mirror stamp plate. And it looks like this. These are the directions. And yes, there's actual directions in here. Wahoo, could chew. But what does this mirror stamp plate do? Well, first off, um, you do have to pull it off from the liner. And that may be a bit of a tug. Can you see how I'm tugging it a little bit? you do have to pull it off from the liner. And once you get it off, uh, you may be able to put it back on the liner and sandwich it in between. It's going to curl because of the tug, but you can keep it and then put, your, put it right back on the liner to keep it in storage. The liner, even though it curled, it's not gonna be harmed and it'll eventually flatten out the more you use it. But what does this stamp plate do? Well, first off, this is just a big old piece of polymer and it, but at a certain density, I guess it would be, because we are going to do mirror stamping. And I know lots of you have seen mirror stamping in the past, and you may be really, really proficient at it, but I want to show those who have no idea what mirror stamping is, what it is. <laughs> so, I have got six new stamp sets exclusive to Scrapbooking Made Simple from Stampendous. They were designed for us. I helped in the design process of them. Fran and I worked together on these and I just love, love, love them. And I love that that she um, took her time to put these together for, for me. It was just amazing. So this is a cling stamp, which means that it's rubber on one side and a foam on the other. Now the foam's not sticky at all, but it is something that will cling to a clear acrylic block. See how it's going to hold? But you can peel it right off. The block is not sticky. The foam is not sticky. It's almost like those cling decorations you would put in your window uh, when your kids were younger or when you were younger. And they would peel right off and not leave a residue because there was no adhesive keeping it together. It was done by kind of a staticky cling type. So I've got my stamp right there and I'm going to ink it up. And today I'm going to be using Memento. And there's a reason I'm going to be using Memento. And yes, we're going to get to that reason. But I just want to show you really quickly. I'm going to stamp the... I'm going to ink up 
And you see, I hold the stamp in my hand and ink this way. I don't go this way. For me, that's more difficult. I like to see where I've put my ink. In addition, let's wipe it off. Baby wipe, wipes it right off. Easy peasy, mac and cheesy. Get a paper towel to wipe it down. So this stamp is gonna continue to cling until one, I either get too much oil from my fingers on the block or the back of the stamp or maybe some embossing powder or whatever. Easiest way to clean your stamps is with either a baby wipe or just a mild dishwashing detergent. And same with your block. If for some reason your block stops clinging, chances are it's dirty. Just wash it. So I inked up, but what I didn't do is this. How y'all doing? Today's Saturday. Are you having a great day? I'm having a super day. I'm probably downstairs doing the free in-store make and take right now. And, oh, I don't know. Um, what do I have planned for the rest of the day? Well, I work until six. <laughs> okay, did you see how much ink I put on there? No, you don't need to do that. You just need to get coverage and go. We're, we don't have to sit here and go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's okay. You've got more ink on there than you're ever possibly going to need. So I'm just going to, I'm using my gush mat. This is a gush mat. And it allows you to make a better stamped image. If you are having trouble stamping, probably you're stamping on a hard surface. When you stamp on a hard surface and you push the stamp down, the stamp has nowhere it's connecting to the paper but it has nowhere to sink into because it's on this hard surface so if you miss a spot you're really going to miss a spot if you don't add enough pressure however if you're on a gush pad and this is a simply defined gush pad and this is half the size it's actually about eight and a half by eleven what happens is when you put the stamp down maybe i'll do it this way when you put the stamp down because this pad is gushy, the stamp as you press down can sink into the paper and make better contact with the paper because the paper's got some give to it. So you want to give all over pressure. You're not doing chest compressions. No stamps already. It's not alive. You can't help it. No reviving it. And then you're going to peel a uh, pull up. And there's my image. Really pretty, right? And super easy. But what is this mirror thing that you were talking about, Stacy? Well, mirror stamping has been around for probably forever, and I don't know who invented it. I probably think somebody on Split Coast Stampers, because they're so flippin' smart and creative on that. Split Coast Stampers, they figure out different ways and unique ways of getting the job done. <laughs> God bless their pee picking hearts. So mirror stamping is where you stamp onto something that will then transfer the ink onto the piece of polymer or plastic or acetate or whatever you're trying to use. And then you bring that over here and transfer the ink. So right now, the stamp that I'm using only goes one way. What if I wanted it to go this way? There's no way to make that happen. The stamp, you can't, you can't do a reverse. I could do um, I could do where I put it on the top here and have my rows, my rows, big rows would be up here at the top, but I want it to have kind of this U shape. So how do I achieve that? Well, I'm going to ink up my stamp. I'm going to grab my mirror stamp, and you can see I've got fingerprints on it. It's, it's fine, no big deal. I'm going to stamp my image. One, two, three, A, B, C. Pull up, and you can see that the image has been transferred onto, onto my piece of polymer. Now, what happens if I stamp, let's ink it back up, plus 
plenty of ink. Let's ink it back up and stamp. And I accidentally uh, twist it just a little bit because the polymer's kind of slippery. It, it, it kind of, your stamp kind of wants to slip and slide a little bit. So now, now you can see that my image is kind of, can you see that my image is kind of blurry here, blurry down there because it twisted. All right, no big deal. Again, baby wipe. You just wipe it right off because this material is very similar to what your clear stamps is made out of. It's a slightly different formulation so that it is thicker and holds up better. Um, you know, it needs to be thicker because you need to pick it up. But it is, a, it is very much like your clear stamp. So your ink is going to just wipe right off of it. Let me dry it off and let's stamp one more time. So ink, ink, ink. One, two, three, A, B, C, pull up. I've got my impression right there. Now I'm bringing back the piece of paper that I started with. Lay it down. Line it up. And put it down and press. And then peel. <gasps> Magic! <laughs> right? That's what this does. It takes your stamps and gives you, it gives you bang for your buck. It takes a stamp that was only going in one direction, only in one direction, and allows you to mirror it. That means that if I had, oh, let's see. Let's grab another piece of paper. And, I'll use the same one. I'm going to ink it up. I'm just going to use the same one today. Grab another. Yes. So let's ink this one up again. And let's stamp. A, B, C. One, two, three. Nice all over pressure and up. Beautiful! But if I had the cute little butterfly. So let's take this stamp off and it just pulls right off. And let's add my cute little butterfly. And I'm going to ink up my butterfly. And the butterfly came off of the happy birthday set. There's a couple butterflies. You can see it right there but I've got a couple butterflies in these sets. So I inked them up. Kind of put them, I don't know, maybe right there. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up, and there he is, so cute. But now we're gonna mirror stamp him. So again, I'm gonna ink him up because right now the only way he can stamp is in the direction I'm going. If I rotate my stamp, he's going to be upside down. So I need to mirror stamp. Ink it up. Stamp right onto my mirror stamp plate. One, two, three, A, B, C. Pull up. and then figure out where I want him to be on this side. Now, I think 
when I'm looking at this, it looks to me like maybe I smeared him just a little bit. He looks a little fuzzy. So I'm going to go ahead and just wipe him right off. Dry off my stamp plate and stamp it again. You're only using ink. No big deal. You'd rather have a nice, gosh, I should, I need to see what I'm stamping. There we go. A nice clear image because it's easy to wipe off the stamp plate. You saw me do it and start again. One, two, three, A, B, C. I think that's better. We're going to go for it. So you can see him on there. I'm going to turn him around and figure out where I want him to be and I can place him exactly where I want him to be. And press down. Now with mirror stamping, the stamped image that you do on the mirror may be slightly lighter than your original image. And that's because you're, you're doing almost like a generational stamping. You're stamping onto something and then transferring it onto something else. So it's actually moving the ink not once, but twice. So good press, peel up. <laughs> Is that not rock star? That's just a little bit of awesome, right? Mirror stamp plate. Are there other ways of achieving this? Yes. Is this easy and affordable? Yes. The mirror stamp plate retails for $14.99. I'm doing it. We're going to do it for you for 30% off because I think this is a $10 item really. So $10.50 is what this is going to cost during this YouTube Yummy. And what it does is it gives you the opportunity to take any stamp you want and do a full mirror image of it mirror stamping and then of course I can go in and I can color. Now this is really important and it's important that you pay attention to what I'm about to say. I am using Memento ink. I am only using Memento ink. Hybrid inks don't work really well with this mirror plate and stays on inks don't work really well with this mirror plate and a India ink does not work well with this mirror plate, and I'm going to show you why. So I've got my stamp. Put it on my block. This time I'm going to take my Hero Hughes India ink, which I love, love, love. And if I just stamp with my India ink, just on paper. India ink is a darker ink. It's, it's um, a blacker ink than the Memento. It's kind of like a really, 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 really black mascara versus a soft black mascara. Your Hero Hughes India ink would be really, really, really black. Your Memento would be a slightly softer black. They both will not move with water, which is really nice. So let's just Stamp it up. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up. Beautiful. Okay, India ink stamps. Beautiful. And then I could come back and watercolor, and that ink is not going to move at all, ever. But let's say I want to do now the mirror image of my flower, only I'm going to use it with India ink. So let's bring back over my plate. Let's re-ink up my stamp. Let's get it down there. One, two, three, A, B, C. I don't want to accidentally move it. Pull it up. You can see that it's on there beautifully. Now all I have to do is decide where I want it to line up. So I'm doing exactly what I did when I used my Memento ink. Down. And you're saying, but Stacy, everything looks exactly the same. I know. Wait for it. Pull 
pull it up. Oh, I didn't get enough pressure maybe there. Nope. That's what you get. Does not look anything like this, does it? It is much lighter in color, but more importantly than that, no matter what I do, it is not going to wipe off. No matter what I do, I can add alcohol to this to try and get it off and it's still not going to come off. I have just permanently inked my mirror pad, which if it happens, it's not the end of the world. It just means that you're going to, every time you use it, you're going to have to ignore that this exists. It will still work. Um, I can still use it with my little butterfly, even though that rose is there, I can still bring my memento ink back over, ink up, stamp. One, two, three, A, B, C, pull up. I can see that my, I can see that my butterfly is there, kind of in the middle. And then I can figure out where I wanna put it here. It's just harder because now you've got that image. You've got that image right in the center of your of your mirror platform. So no India ink, no stays on, no archival. Use your mementos, use VersaFine, use, um, I think Claire, VersaClaire might work. Stay, stay here. Stay away from here and a permanent type ink. So stays on and archival, no can do. You will end up permanently inking your plate. And that is not what we're trying to do. Also, it doesn't transfer very well. And this is kind of how a hybrid ink also transfers. Not so well. Your memento does a beautiful job. Beautiful, right? Now you can look at all, for, for 10 bucks, you can go back and look at all of your stamps and go, oh my gosh, now I can do things I was never able to do with them before. And, you know, like I said, I can absolutely sit here and I've got my markers and I could certainly palette paint for you and paint all of this in. But I think it's more important that you see how to use the product. There's lots of YouTubes. I've got lots of YouTubes where I've colored before. Um, it's more important to see how to use it and how not to use it. Sometimes the not how not to use it is more important that I teach you than how to use a product. Stay away. But oh my gosh, with Memento, happy day. Oh, first time, I mean, I've done mirror stamping before, but it has never, ever, ever been this simple, ever. All right, so that is a brand new product and it does come with directions and it does tell you stay away from, I think it just says stays on, but I need to tell you, um, avoid permanent ink such as stays on, which will stain. It stays on archival and any kind of India ink is going to stain. So a little bit more information than what's in the, in the pamphlet, but the pamphlet certainly does give you a better idea of how to use them if you didn't just watch this YouTube. <laughs> Okay, so it comes with the two liners. You have to peel those liners off. It can be a little tricky. Just keep peeling. And then to clean it, just a baby wipe. Just a baby wipe to clean it. This one's never gonna come clean, unfortunately. That is going to be on there forever. 
and then let it sit and dry. It has a little bit of a tact to it, so don't think that you're trying to get it unsticky. It's really not like like sticky sticky, like adhesive sticky. It just has a little bit of a tack to it. And, um, and it clings right down to that paper just absolutely beautifully. And then you press, pull off, and what you get is a little bit of magic. All right, so that's the first thing from Stampendous that I wanted to show you. And again, we have beautiful stamps from them. This is the set that made the make and take that's going on right now. And these are exclusive. I'll show them all to you when we're done, when I show you the samples. But we've got six new sets that are just a little bit of happiness. And um, I think you'll like all of them. All right, now we're going to move on to something that I did a uh, a while ago, not not a, uh, too long ago, because I said I would come back and do the next step, which is what we're going to do today. I have their window Rama die, and when you look at the packaging, love you, Fran, but it leaves a little something to be desired. If you were looking at this in a store, you would not know what it does. You would probably walk right past it. It really doesn't give you a full explanation on how to use this or how wonderful it really is. I know the first time I saw it, I did not understand what the die was. Um, let me grab one. This is the make and take we did a while ago with the window Rama die. So it makes this darling little three-dimensional uh, box that you can then decorate and when it slides down, it slides, it folds flat into an A2 size card envelope. So you can send this in the mail and then whoever gets it, gets it. Boom, stands right up, makes a cute little 3D dimensional box for you. This is absolutely darling, truly darling. And there's lots of wonderful ways to use it. And when I first came out with it, when I, when I first did it on a YouTube, for Stampendous with the Stampendous window Rama. I did it simple, very, very simple. And I ignored what looks like crease lines on the side. So I'm gonna start again, very simple, and I'm just gonna run it through very quickly to show you how to use the main die. And then we're gonna get a little more complicated because I need to show you how these lines come into play when you want to start adding even more dimension. So I'm going to put that right there. I think I'll keep that right there. That one first and then that one. All right. So this is the main die. And I'm going to grab just a couple pieces of paper I'm going to use different colored paper so you can see how I put it together so it's easy to follow along. I've got my Sizzix Big Shot machine. I am using a magnetic platform today. You do not have to. You can absolutely use just your multi-purpose platform, whether it be large, the extended version, or the small version. You would keep your extended or your multi-purpose platform, whether it be extended or standard, completely closed. Do not open any tabs. I'm gonna be doing some die cutting and some stamping, so I'm using my magnetic platform. This does not come with your Big Shot machine. This is, as somebody put it, a necessary <laughs> luxury. <laughs> I wanna say it's like $39.99 for this. And it is wonderful because when you put your paper down and you put your die down, nothing moves. That magnet holds that die into place. So if you're doing any kind of die cutting and stamping, oh my gosh, it's just a little bit of a dream boat. Truly it is. So um, I've got my clear plate there, my cut plate down first. I've got my paper that I want to see when I on my finished project facing me. I've got my die with the ridges side down. So ridges where you can feel those ridges that needs to go against your paper because that's what's going to be cutting your paper. And it's a wafer die because you see how wafer thin it is. And then a do not cut plate at the top. And we use a do not cut plate and we try not to cut into this plate as much as possible because it keeps the plate completely flat. And that allows us to slide through our machine a little bit easier. When you have two plates that are warped, 
and your top and your bottom plate are both warped because that will happen when you use this machine. Over time, your plates will absolutely warp. It's to be expected. But to have one that's nice and smooth and straight, it helps it just go through the machine a little bit easier. So I'm gonna send it on through. Might hear some creaks and some cracks. And this is what I call an open frame die. Don't know where I came up with that name. I don't know if I came up with that name or I heard somebody else come up with that name. So there's one and I need to cut one more because the box takes two. So I'm using eight and a half by 11 paper and I just cut it in half. So one sheet of eight and a half by 11 will easily get you one full box. And I'm gonna send it on through. Yep, little bits of creaks and cracks. It's okay, don't worry. Just keep on going all the way to the end. Send it on through. Mm. Okay, there we go. I might not have had enough pressure, but we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. Now, if you don't want those creaks and cracks, if that sound bothers you, the best way to do it is to take this and put this on a diagonal. So when this is straight, when this is straight, your roller in your machine is right here. That's adding pressure to the die to make it cut. And it's here and your straight line is here so they're parallel to each other. So when you put it through and it's trying to grab the die to pull it all the way through, that's when you get that big clunk because you've got a straight edge going against a straight roller. If that bothers you, it won't hurt the die, but if it bothers you, you just take the die and you tilt it a little bit at an angle. And now the roller's going to feed from this and then feed down. And you're not going to hear that big thump. So let's try one more time, just so you see. No big thump. A couple little creaks and cracks, but that's okay. I should have done it in a third color. And poof, there we go. All right, I only want two colors. Let's move this over. And now I need to decide which one I want to be my front. I need to put a window in one of these and I have to decide which one I want to be my front. Also, you'll be able to see, and I don't know that the camera will pick it up, but you'll be able to see little score lines, but they're not really score lines on both sides. There's little score lines. And again, I'm not sure if I can get the camera to pick it up because I can't see what you're seeing there's four of them. Now the very bottom one here is an actual score line that you will have to take and fold on both sides. But I also, like I said, need to decide which one do I want to be my front piece because that's the one I need to put a window in because right now all I've created is a box, a box that will fold onto itself, but just a box. I need to put that window in. So how about the purple? Purple works. So it comes with a die that allows you to put the window, the aperture in. And I can bring this back over and I can cut. Okay, this is a good time to do this. Can I cut? my die and my window at the same time. Sure you can. And this is why that magnetic platform is so nice because wherever you put that window, if I put it down lower for some reason or if I put it up higher for some reason or if I get it absolutely perfectly centered, you don't have to tape it down. That's the beauty of a magnetic platform. So I've got this here, I've put my window in. Yes, I can cut these at the exact same time and I'm gonna send them on through. 
Now, because I'm cutting two dies at the same time, you may just want to go back and forth. Doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't take you any extra time. So the down, I've got it all the way through. And now I'm just going to send it on back. I'm not even going to rotate. Ooh, wow, that was a big bubble, a big move. <laughs> I'm not even going to rotate it. Because all I want to do is make sure it gets cut. And because both dies are open frame dies and they are not intricate at all, I don't need a precision base plate. Put this off the side. And now I have cut with a window. I would absolutely keep this without question. You'll use this for something, I promise you. I'm not throwing mine away either, which for me is saying a lot because usually I'm just like, okay, well, I'll get rid of that. We've got plenty of them. Now, again, I have to score. The bottom one needs to fold to help make my box. So now my box has a window in it. Oh, so cute, right? I know. <laughs> and then of course, you can take anything you want and start to decorate any way you want. I mean, really just darling. Remember, when you're putting this together, you want the top piece with the window to be on the outside so that the back side is hidden. You wouldn't want to do this. That looks a little funny. You want the top. So all I need to do is take some of my Stacy tape. Stacy tape is a double-sided adhesive. It's actually simply defined tape, but it's been nicknamed Stacy tape for so long that um, that we just we go with it. <laughs> I'm gonna put some Stacy tape all the way down at the bottom. All the way down to that score line and well I'll just do the whole box peel it off all the way down to the bottom well hmm maybe I'll wait okay so let's just pull this one off And we're going to take the top and we're going to line it right over. And just put those two together. Easy peasy. So the reason why I hesitated and I waited is because you want to have all your decorations put in. <laughs> you want to have this completely done before you close this side up. It's a lot harder to try and add something to it once it's sealed. But when it's open, you have lots of time to play and embellish and layer because you do have room. And then when it's all said and done, it folds flat so you can put it into an envelope, a standard sized regular envelope and mail it, okay? but. We need to take it to a next level. And there is a YouTube that shows you exactly how to do just this. I already did a basic YouTube and we decorated the inside. In fact, this was the make and take that we did. And I showed you how to use this piece here that comes with the, with the die set. And this was one of the original cues and how to put it all together. <clears throat> so that was, oh, and also this one. I've got a few of them that were done from the original, just putting it together simply. How to get this piece in there, how to decorate the front if you want. But I need to talk to you about those silly little score lines that are still here that most people want to start bending. Most people want to start to fold them. Actually, I can do it on this one. I've got, still got this one. So you've got your main score line from the bottom and your main score line. So your bottom 
and again that would be this piece right here because I don't have a window in it but then you've got those funny little funny little score lines and those become very very important because they're not score lines you're not going to take it and start bending them although I know intuitively that's what we want to do we see a line that's put into a die that didn't cut and we say oh it must be a score line and we start wanting to bend it and that's what happens you don't want to score these not at all so then you're saying but I don't understand why did they put them there why are they on the die why does the die have it all right let me show you we're going to start with some white paper and I have and when I say I I mean the SMS girls <laughs> have pre die cut out the main die for me so they've already cut this piece out for me I've got quite a few of them to play with which was very thoughtful of them I think this is gonna bother me so I'm gonna throw that away all right so I don't know if I can get oh can you see those there they are those lines and the bottom one is a true score line absolutely so you're always going to be scoring that bottom one. But what do those other three lines do? Well, that's where these two sets come into play. This is a die, a die set that does backgrounds and the stamp set that coordinates with it. So you've got a bunch of little borders and then you've got a, a stamp set that will then cut the edges. This is to decorate the inside. This allows you to add that dimension and those layers. And I know you're going, huh, Stacy, what are you talking about? All right, so I did this in white and I want to add, I want to add some clouds to my box. Here's my box, and I want to add some clouds to the back of it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to grab the cloud die, and kind of a little high because you don't want it too low. You want your clouds a little bit high in the sky, not now down to the ground. So I'm going to take the piece of white paper that we cut the base out of, and I'm going to add those clouds I'm going to bring my Big Shot machine back over. I'm going to lay my paper down. And I'm going to cut. Now, your wings of your paper need to be folded towards you when you're cutting. Those wings need to be folded towards you you don't want to be cutting if those wings are tucked behind you want to be cutting with those wings folded towards you and i think that's pretty good you'll see that the die doesn't go all the way to the edge put over my top plate and cut Easy peasy, mac and cheesy. Wings facing me, and I've started to cut my clouds. Now, I'm just gonna take my scissors, and I'm going to cut to the edge. Done and to the edge. Done. Creating my clouds. Then I can take my stamp set that matches it. And there's a stamp that does clouds. Grab my block. Lay it flat.
pick it up and I'm ready to stamp. And this stamp is going to follow the outline of my clouds. So let's ink it up really quick. And again, I'm not going to I'm not going to color or anything like that and I'm I'm just going to ink this up and get a stamped image on here so you can see. It's more about how to put the layering together. Because many of you may already own the window rama stamp and not fully understand how to make it as dimensional as it can be. So, wings, wings facing me. Don't want to have the wings back against. I want to have the wings facing me. And then I'm going to line up my stamp to the best of my ability really quickly. I'm not going to worry about it too much. And I'm going to stamp my image. Obviously, I lied. I'm worrying about it too much because I can see this is just slightly off. Okay, just go with it, right? Okay, let it rip. One, two, three, A, B, C. Okay, good enough. There are my clouds. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> that took forever. <laughs> okay, now this is where these lines come into play. They're not score lines, they're measuring lines. And you're like, huh? What do you mean measuring lines? Well, you've got the lines here on your base that you've made. And now you've got the lines here. And there are four of them. The bottom one is your score line. Then you have one, two, three. And depending on how many of these lines you cut off, that will start to build your layers. And you're like, okay, I love you. You just lost me. I understand. <laughs> so my top score line is right there. I'm going to cut that off. And I'm gonna cut this one off. Then I'm going to take some Stacy tape and put it on both sides. So on the back side of the wings, Stacy tape because the wings are always facing you. They're always coming up. Peel off my Stacy tape. And to think about this. <laughs> Your top row right here is where you line this up. Top row is where you line this up. Then you peel off your Stacy tape on this side And same thing, the top of here, the edge of here is your guide and this is where you line it up, straight off to your guide. So pull it up, can you see me lining it up? Just to the top, oh too low, bring it up to the top. And that looks good. Score in. Oh, see, too low. See how this one's too low? I need to pull it off and do it again. Line it up. This time I'm going to do it on my table so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so 
to line that up to the top. Better, better. Okay, my first layer is in. So I've got my clouds. Now, the next thing I wanna do is maybe add some grass. So let's grab, or maybe a hillside. Let's grab a little bit of a hillside here. And let's just do some green paper so you see the difference. Green paper cut in half. I can't just cut this and put it in there if I want it to be dimensional. I need to cut another one of my bases. Because I need those measuring lines that everybody thinks is a score line. So forward. Sorry if I'm rocking a lot, I didn't put it in at an angle. I know it's going to make a big thump, and I'll just bring it back. Okay. So I need this piece because I need the score lines. Now I can take it and decide where do I want my little hills. I need it below my clouds. So little hills maybe, maybe there. And I'm going to bring over my die cutting machine and I'm gonna put those little rolling hills into my paper. And again, the die isn't going to extend all the way to the end. That way you can kind of play with it and decide where you want your hills and so I'm just going to send it on through and it's going to put that cut line right in there. Now I've got my rolling hills. I'm going to take and do a snip here. And I'm going to do a snip here. And I might just save that and do something else out of that. So my rolling hills. Now when I put my clouds down, I cut the first score line off of each side. This time, I'm going to cut the first and the second. So I'm going to cut not only the first, but the second score line all the way off. And I'm going to cut the first and the second score line all the way off. Then I'm going to do my wings and do my wings. Add a little bit of Stacy tape. Doesn't matter if it's too long, it's double sided adhesive. So you are able to uh, fold it back onto itself and be fine. Expose my Stacy tape. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm going to lay this all the way at the top. I'm gonna lay, line it all the way up at the top and stick it down. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to expose my sticky. And I'm going to lay, fold my little wing up and I'm going to lay this all the way to the top so that it covers that white paper that's there. So that it covers that white paper all the way to the top.
And now what I've done is I've started to create layers. Can you see this one? It's now becoming dimensional so that you've got a, a very back layer, then here, then your rolling hills, which is a little bit closer, and then I can do another. So the girls did this one for me in the white. Let me grab my, um, let me grab my little house. And let me grab my little block. And put my little house onto my block. Grab my gush. Ink, 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 ink. Where do I want my house? So my clouds started way up here. My rolling hill is about here. I want my houses a little bit down. Not too far because remember, you've got to be able to see them through that opening. So I'm going to put them maybe right here. And we'll see how well I did. Press, 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 maybe C, one, two, three, and up. And there's my little houses. Now I can take the die that goes with your little houses, which is right here on the set. Bring over my machine. Lay it on top of my little houses so it just lines up so. See that I've got the die with my stamp. Gonna put that cut line into the paper. I'm gonna cut to the cut line off the edges. So I'm gonna cut here to separate and here to separate. Now remember, the bottom score line is just that. It's a score line, so I've got to make my wings. Got to make my wings. And your wings are always going to be facing you because you're making a diorama. Just think about this when you were a kid and you had to make dioramas for school. That's the same thing we're doing here. Now. I've cut off the first score line already for the back one. I've cut off the second one for my green grass. Now I'm going to cut to my third line. So cut and there's my third line. Cut. So you only have three items to cut, three ways to cut, three layers to cut. You only have three of them. So it's not a big challenge. It's just remembering that your, your background, your most background has the most of the score lines still left. Your next one, you're going to eliminate one of those score lines, giving you that dimension. And then your last one, let's put some Stacy tape on it, I know it seems complicated, but my goodness gracious, first off, it really, once you start playing with it, you will see just how simple and easy it is. The whole thing is that you have to start 
if you're going to do the dimension, you have to start with several of the base dies. That's what I've been cutting from, the base dies, because that base die is what gives you the lines to do your measurement. Now again, I've got my fold face up. I'm gonna line it right up on top of the green, so I'm gonna cover that green that I just did for the grass. I'm just gonna hide it with this one and line it straight up to the top, just like I've been doing. Give it a good press. And then I'm gonna expose this one and I'm gonna line it right up to the top just like I've been doing and cover up that green. And give a good press. And can you see the layers now? Can you see that what I've done? I know how cute, right? And I didn't even do anything to it. <laughs> now, if I really wanted, I could have taken the bottom. Let's say that this was, I just cut it too high. I just didn't leave enough room. Oh, Stacy tape is not forgiving. Let's say I wanted it to be, those rolling hills to be a little more rolling. I can just take and trim the bottom. Take a little bit off the bottom. And then I can just do with my scissors. And then let's add some more Stacy tape back because I peeled the Stacy tape right off. Good thing about Stacy tape is that it sticks. <laughs> you just have to remember it sticks. <laughs> okay, so let's take, let's see if I can get this side back on. Again, hold down to the bottom, line it up to cover. I'm covering up the green from the rolling hills. Put it right down. Expose this one and line it up. Cover up that green from the rolling hills. Now I see more of my rolling hills. Okay, that makes me happier. <laughs> and you can see the layering that I'm doing. Honestly, this is not hard. What it takes is having, depending on how many layers, you need two of the base dies, two of the base dies just to get your top and your bottom. Two base dies just to get your top and bottom. And then it's up to you. How many things do you want to layer? Do you just want to do a background and just have one there and maybe have the rainbow or have um, the, the, we have the cute little doggies that we did from the first um, sets or, or flowers up here. What do you want to do? Do you want it with two layers? Because then you're going to cut off a, an extra piece of, of the um, scoring. You're always, always, always going to have the bottom one as a score because that's what makes your flaps. Always, always, always. Then you can decide. Let's say I cut this one to something I like. Then you can decide. Where do I want this to fall? Do I want it to have no dimension at all? No dimension at all, then you just tape these right down Put it into your, put it into your box and you're good to go. But if you want dimension, you cut one of the score lines off. One score line off gives you your first step of dimension. Line it up with the top of the box. and it will start to give you your first step of dimension. Then, if you want to layer something else. Then you not only cut your first, but your second score line. Which are actual measuring guides. 
second. Now I'm taking two of those lines off and I'm folding up. So I have my wings and then I layer that on the inside to make my next piece. Then if I wanted a third piece, oh, let's take this one back. I can cut this one. And this time I'm going to cut one, two, three score lines off, leaving me just a little tiny wing. And then that would layer right on top of the others. So let me put this one together for you really quickly just so you can see. So I've got my bottom piece. I've got my next one that I've cut one tab off. Just one. I'm going to line it all the way to the top of my white, my nice white wing. And let's put this one. Once you make it the first time, it may take you a few, you know, a try or two to get it down the first time. But the minute you have the concept of how to do this, one, you will never forget it. <laughs> Two, you can literally make these in a matter of minutes. I was so skeptical because it took me, I want to say it took me almost three hours of playing with this before I finally realized that those tab lines aren't tabs, they're measurement guides. And then it dawned on me and I had this huge light bulb moment. And then I'm thinking, oh, this is so very clever. <laughs> kind of wished I had thought of it <laughs> because what an easy way to add dimension that will still allow you to send it in a envelope through US mail. And all I do is line to the top. You don't have to worry about the measurement because Stampendous has already done it for you. They have put the measurement in. All you have to worry about is lining to the top. Can you see what I'm doing? Can you see how the next layer covers the previous layer? And then the last one. And how you decorate them is entirely up to you. You can be taking the stamps and dies you already own and building these layers because it all starts with the base. You have to have the window Rama die. That you have to have. That's without question. You can't do anything without that. But once you have that, then, then it's up to you what to do. And my goodness gracious, you can even have something as easy as just putting the beautiful flower cues, the, the new sets that we have, the exclusive sets, as the background and keeping it very, very simple like we did in the first YouTube. But I really wanted to show you how to utilize, because these dies and the stamp set, wherever it is, these were meant to go with the window Rama. They were designed and developed so that you can add more dimension to your window Rama. So let me finish this one. So all the way to the top. And then peel this one off and all the way to the top. And all you're using is paper. So if it doesn't work out the first time, it's okay. Grab your yucky scratch paper and figure out how to learn how to build it. Follow me. Do what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Fold down, fold down. And do you see the dimension that I'm building? And everything is popping out at you. And that's the idea of having the window Ramas is that everything starts to just kind of pop out at you. But when you send it flat into an envelope, when you send it 
flat into an envelope. Now, I could have added um, flowers in here. I could have colored all of this. There's so much to be done with it. Let your imagination go crazy. Can you imagine how cute these would be with little signs coming up the back of them? You did it, congratulations, way to go. And, and when it pops out, when they receive it, it gets to sit there and just look so special and so cute on their desk or their mantle or in their bedroom. Kids, kids love these. And the first round of um, dies and stamps they were, uh, they had some cute little doggies and, and cute little kid things. The ones we've done this time for the window Rama is definitely more floral and they're just beautiful. And we did them in a way that allows you to do the mirror stamping so that you could take, you could take a piece like this with the mirror stamping, assume that I cut it out of my base. Well. Just do it super quick. You could take this here it is. Put it on. Ink it up. Stamp, because I'm using the white base. Stamp. One, two, three, A, B, C, and up. And then grab my mirror plate. Of course, the one I have Let's open a new one. Grab my mirror plate, peel off the liners. It's gonna be a little tough, I want you to see that you really have to give it a tug. Peel off the liners. You might wanna give it a wipe down or wash it with some dishwashing detergent, some palm olive or Dawn. Dry it off and let's bring this back. Let's ink this up. Let's just get it on there. One, two, three, A, B, C, up. Oh, I missed some at the bottom. That's okay. Turn it over. Put it down. Peel it off. Not quite enough ink. And then I could layer that. I could just use that as a bottom layer. Just use that as a bottom layer. Go in there, color it, put a sentiment in there, put a sentiment right there. So I could pull all of this out like it never happened. I could put this in like it was meant to be. Color in there, put a beautiful happy birthday sentiment right there and send it on its way. I mean, when I say you've got options with this window Rama, you've got options. And when you add in the mirror stamping with the stamps you may already own, all of a sudden they have a brand new life. All of a sudden you can, 
You cannot just have the butterfly facing one way. You can have lots of butterflies going all over facing the other different directions, but you only had one butterfly stamp, but it doesn't matter. You were able to do it. Amazing. Okay, I know this was a lot. I get that, but the window rama die really is phenomenal from keeping it extremely simple. And again, I do have my Tombow markers and I could paint for you, but I've got YouTube's already on how to do that. This was really about how to make that layering piece so that you can put it inside your window rama. And it's all about those little lines that you didn't know what to do with or what they meant. They are your measuring guide that allows you to make dimension. Really, in fact, we could put that, I mean, if we really wanted, okay, no, I gotta stop. <laughs> All right, so I hope I've given you more understanding of how the window Rama die works and what more you can do with it and how useful it is to have the sets that are meant to go with it. So this set is meant to go with the window Rama and then the flowers that we did, the new flower sets, there's six of them, are also perfectly meant to fit inside your window Rama and allow you to play as much as you want. Remember, when you are using your mirror, uh, your mirror plate, do not use Stazon or Archival or India ink or you will stain it. You will stamp it and that stamp will stay there. You want to use Memento because Memento wipes right off. No problem. Easy peasy, okay? All right, I have got samples and stuff to show you. So let me start with the product. I think you're probably gonna have to watch this maybe more than once, but I really just encourage you to get out basic paper and just start to play. So we have the mirror, the mirror plate, comes with directions. If it's $14.99, we're gonna do it for $10.50 because I think that's the best price for it. Then we've got six new exclusive stamp sets that will work all on their own. They will work with the mirror plate and they will work with the window Rama. Six new stamp sets. That's so cute. And the B, the B can go multiple directions. The flowers can go side multiple directions. The Dragonfly can go multiple directions. This corner can now be two corners, can go multiple directions. The roses that I was using today. So the roses don't have the butterfly, but the roses I made the beautiful half circle. Then we have the stamp set for the window Rama, which you can use with or without the window Rama, and the matching die to actually make the, the cuts so it looks very dimensional. And last but not least, the actual window Rama die. And I do have an earlier YouTube on how to use this just as very basic. Now, samples, all right, so here's a window Rama die. Just very basic, easy, one panel, no, um, no dimension to it whatsoever, but it looks fabulous and it folds flat down. Here we have one that has lots of dimension. And to help you, you open it up, and again, you can see all of that dimension. And you can see what it looks like once they're all colored. Mine I just did in white paper. But once you get your markers in there and you color, and then again, it'll fold flat. Really cute. I'll grab a few of these. A simple panel right on the back, simple butterfly, no dimension, but darling. How cute are these? So some of these are from the original stamp sets that we did that we're going to put back onto a YouTube Yummy. And then we have 
the new set of six, which will also be on YouTube Yummies. See, look at how cute is this. There's the grass, there's the clouds in the back. How darling is that? And then it just folds flat. Okay, so now we've got some of the newer sets. So this was done with one of our new sets that's exclusive to us. And here's a window Rama. Look at how it, how beautiful. I mean, really beautiful is that? Done with pattern paper. Absolutely gorgeous. And done with the beautiful rose. Flat. It's lovely, right? That one makes my heart happy. All right, then how gorgeous is this? Again, done with one of the new stamp sets. Not Window Rama at all. This is just a stunner of a card. So you can use the stamp sets just on their own. Again, another one just using the stamp set. One of the new six. So we wanted to show you how beautiful they are just on their own. Right? Love, love, love. Gorgeous, right? And then we have some that we did the mirror imaging. So the bees going backwards and forwards. And we stamped off. Look at, we barely even used. That one is, oh, which one is it? It's this one here. We only used just very little of this set. To do this card but we used the B and we mirrored it so we had the two B's same thing here we mirrored the butterfly and here we mirrored the actual flowers having that mirror image makes the stamp bigger than it was. Here we mirrored the butterflies. And the last one, we mirrored the dragonflies. All right, you guys. I know that was a challenge. I know, I get it, I do, I understand. And that some of you may not think that you can do this. You can do this. You have to trust me on this one. This is not difficult. It's just a matter of cutting several of those bases and cutting off some tabs. That's it. And what it does is stunning. But if this isn't for you, then we have the beautiful stamp sets that stand all on their own. And they are exclusive to us, I think, until at least July of this year. So if you loved any of those stamp sets, and they are on a YouTube Yummy, I wanna say that they were, they're $10, so they'll be down to $8 a set for those Stampenda stamps. And the mirror plate, if nothing else, the mirror plate is a huge takeaway moment because it takes what you already have and gives you twice as much for 10 bucks. Okay, can't go wrong with that. All right, so it's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you next week, and a big thank you to all of your support and your love and your well wishes and your thoughtful prayers that our lovely insurance company will come through for us. All right, until next week, you can find everything at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you later. Bye, everybody.